Peachy, folks, let's make some noise for these two teams. Our top two of Captain's Draft 4 by Events DC. Let's see who takes the advantage. We've got the uh, fidget spinner silencer in there. Oh, you're so right. He's hanging out. I forgot about that. <laughs> the rest of the pool, though, Omni Knights. We didn't end up with our Magnus, which was a little surprising, yeah. I thought, but perhaps this game. I kind of feel like he's sort of a worse version of Void in some ways. Like, you get the big team fight ultimate. Like, RP isn't even really the Magnus win ability anymore. It's more like he's, you grab him because Empower is good and because RP is pretty good. That's what it, what it feels like. Hey, there's a Razor. We could see another Razor, guys. Whoa. Oh. Never, no, never mind. Okay. Yeah, but. they don't want to play that here. Uh, Tiny's still in the pool, so maybe opening up that, that option there. The Meepo is there. Maybe a concern for Vici to ban out. Enchantress. Very likely ban first phase. Another uh, Oracle Huskar. That's true. There's Shadow Demon. Finally see Tinker. There's a hero here, yeah, I was going to say. Like, we haven't seen in a while. It's also one of those dangerous, you know, potentially just win you the game heroes. That would be the Tinker. Uh, PL also kind of fits in that category as well, Jack. We have seen him played a little bit more than Tinker, but... Looks like he could have some potential in this pool. There's a Meepo. We've seen Meepo's banned a lot first phase because everybody just Mostly wants to get it out of there. Secret. Just don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Ace so, is very good. And Vichy's already done two bans, so they're pretty much out. So there's going to be some... In there could be some potential interesting heroes. To me, it seems like we're light on supports. We've got a Shadow Demon, we've got a Lion. And... Yeah, Silencer, Oracle, Sand, Sand King, King, Pudge. Yeah. I mean, there are some options, but it's not great. Yeah, that's actually true. I feel very confident about Secret coming into the 2-3 picks here. With only one ban left for Vici, they, they really want to look at these last two bans for themselves, because they can set themselves very well for those first three heroes. They're going to have to give something up, obviously. They could say, like, okay, if we leave the Omni Knight, are they, like, guaranteed to take it? Uh, and then does that mean we get a puppy enchantress? You know, the support pool is pretty limited, but obviously he's very good at the hero. Oh. Oh, well, we'll just lose Tinker. All right, never mind. Yeah, because I think if you ban the Magnus, uh, there's n almost nothing that really gets the Tinker well, and you can just lose a game right off of that, and that's something that Ori definitely plays quite a bit as well. Is there a strat to just skip bans for the 2-3 guys? Is that the next level of Captain's Draft? It just all depends on what the pool is, basically. Grab all the so so or so called crappy heroes and then have all, a couple of good ones. Yeah, you could do that. But are there any Huskar counters in this pool? Because we've seen him banned actually in this like yeah, third banning spot pretty commonly. Uh, Meepo can be good. Ursa is pretty good against Clinks. There's a lot of. Physical... I guess Axe is actually pretty okay too. Yeah, there's there's a lot of physical damage this game. There's so many. Yeah. I, okay. It's not going to be a Huskar game, I don't think. Gotcha. Yeah, Clinks, Ursa. <laughs> okay, definitely not a Huskar game. There we go. percent not a Huskar. That was the more likely ban uh, team, I think, for that one. Yeah. Secret. A little frightening. So Enchantress could easily make it through. A lot of good, a couple good supports left, I guess. And uh, a lot of physical damage cores. So what's the one you hand over here, guys? You, know, you gotta give up something. Do you want to give up an Omni Knight? Do you want to give up a Tiny? Uh, I think you don't give up the Magnus. It's a little too dangerous. Just a bit too comfortable on the hero? Yeah, not just comfort, but just, again, as an enabler for, for any other core that you want to run. There's a number of melee cores here. It's Perhaps it cores that aren't necessarily as ideal as their usual yeah, state. That's exactly how I feel about Omni Knight. You let that hero get through and... I don't know, he feels like the harder hero to play around, personally. It can be really tough to, to beat him in lane or zone him enough. And with the limited support pool, that could be even, even more of an issue. Although, there's always going to be things like Ursa, Clinks as your cores. Those can kind of deal with him in the lane, possibly pressure him. Wow. So they take out one of the few supports. I think that's the right move, right? Because if there's only maybe five good supports, you ban one, you take two of the other ones, you're kind of giving your opponents trash. So That suggests to me almost like if they, uh, again, there aren't too many good disables from the supports, so... If they end up going with Magnus here, I wouldn't be surprised if Secret picked up a Slark. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. It's the, the easy hex, right? Yep. I think Secret is maybe banking on Vici, grabbing Omni, and then picking up Shadow Demon as a support. For what reason? Isn't he pretty decent against... The, no, Repel doesn't... Uh, well, the, yeah, you can't, you the can't Shadow Demon ult gets rid of uh, Guardian Angel. Just Guardian Angel. Just yeah. Guardian Angel. Not, not as good as it used to be. Okay. But. I'm Used to be pretty good. Uh, either way, Shadow Demon is still good support, so it wouldn't be bad. But well, there's Shadow Demon Luna also. Mm, they felt like point. the most successful team opening with supports too. Whereas a lot of the teams we talked often about how they were like opening cores and they were spotting that, and then that's kind of what won in the game. Mm -hmm. Vici has been very confident on just the disruptor to start, uh, and then and based said, on ban rates, I feel yeah, like it's going to be it again. Yeah, Shadow Demon or Shadow. Enchantress is going to be my guess. I've not seen much Shadow Demon this tournament. So if you take the Enchantress now, but you don't take the Mirana, then you're giving up SD Mirana versus your own Enchantress. So that's not yep. exactly ideal. 
There's also a Luna in there in the pool, which is yes. uh, some resurgent uh, pairings with the Shadow Demon. I didn't even see game. that guy up it's there. A pretty safe bet. With all this talk about limited supports. Yep. Reliable stun. He's obviously not as good as a, as a four position as some other heroes, but if he gets off to a decent early game and transitions, he can be sort of a pseudo offlaner. So, always good to have Burrow Strike in the game. He looks like the best four in the whole pool, too. Uh, Pudge has been extremely hit or miss in this True. tournament. Definitely better to have Sanking over somebody like Leshrac or something. Try to force something weird Ooh. in the four. So, do you want to take. Oh, they're going for him. Yami. Yeah, it's, it's a good choice. Like, uh, if Shadow Demon's your support, you're already going to be limited on what you can do to zone offlaners to mm -hmm. to make things happen. Like, Shadow Demon can't gank super well, he can't zone super well, but he does have good defensive saves. And he's okay against some offlaners, but against Omni Knight, not really. And it's yeah. nice to play aggressive when you have that little bit of a heal back and you as like the Sanking support or something. He can just like run into this Omni Knight's lane, Burrow Strike That's someone, a, yeah, purify, really good point. Yeah. dead. But uh, I don't think you guys have seen this one before. The old class. Time. Explain it to me, Trent. Why is this good? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't get it. Okay. I don't, uh, can't really figure it out. Yeah, glaives are one of these uh, years. Bouncy glaives, baby. Definitely not bad. Um, decent opener helps make up for the fact that she's a little squishy sometimes. But against Omni Sand King, that's still really dangerous because that damage is very upfront. What about our boy Tiny? He's still hanging out up there. That's true. I heard he's a strong hero. Would you you would put him on Vici's side, or are you think in secret? Oh, I just mean in general. I, I like him better for secret. I would say. I'm just a little surprised he's uh, made it this far, but uh, the power of SD Luna beckons. I think, of I think the Omni Sand King was, is, was good for letting their opponents have SD Luna. Because sure. SD Luna is good, but it's not like the end of the world. Does uh, Vici play Leshrac at all? A hero that pairs pretty nicely with Shadow Demon, can synergize with the Death Ball push. Oh, they don't get that much in TM, but yeah, they, they definitely play it. They can go on either support. There's the tiny. That makes a lot more sense. Like. I think Lush is too fragile. They need something that's at least slightly tanky. Because Shadow Demon doesn't like keep squishy heroes alive. It's more like you want somebody that's kind of hard to kill. Mm -hmm. That way he can break your small window where it was the right time to go in. So, and doing things like disrupting Tiny or or Luna with a BKB. Like if they initiate think, on Luna, uh, you just disrupt her. She gets her BKB off every time. Things I think like this that would be huge. a four Tiny probably. But with how bad the pool is. Okay, that's possible. That's yeah. probably the best option. We've seen uh, how good Lanham's been overall. Oh, I want to see a toss. Toss Eclipsed Luna in. That'd yeah, be fun. Easy set up from cool. SD, too. Toss RP. <laughs> <laughs> Omni Knight and Sand King have stopped moving. <laughs> yeah, so they'll, they'll be fixed once we get another secret pick, I'm sure. Tossed Aghanim's Luna, Shadow Demon. All right, we figured it out. So what's... I feel like something... Something that's good against single target tanky heroes would be good, like Ursa or something like that. Right, they do go Ooh. for Leshrac, though. I'm a little bit surprised. I think it works good because if they repel Leshrac, that covers a lot of his issues. He can buy things. Sure. I don't know if he's going to go Ags or not, but he's going to probably go things like Bloodstone, maybe Yule's raw HP stuff. Being able to skip a BKB for a fight or two could make a big difference and help him. Like, he does do a ridiculous amount of damage. Yeah, he's very hard to run core, but if you have someone back him up like the Omni Knight, this is certainly a way to do it. And sure. if he has a good game, he can clear Luna Illusions, no problem. Mm -hmm. He deals so much damage. He just has to be backed up by items or survivability. Yeah, without the repel, Lesh always feels like one of those heroes that just has... In, it's almost like Sven. There's so many items that he needs to be good. Is it worth covering him with a silencer? If we wanted to put this core and find ourselves a position 5? I don't think it's... It's uh, not nukes. Or Oracle 2? It's not really, like... The, the reason I said repel is just because stuns and burst, but I, I don't think he cares that much about um, raw magic damage. I don't think a silencer is like... Like, Luna could still right-click him to kill him if he's out of position or something. So I guess this is probably then a... Uh, Clearly a carry bang. And a support. Obvious, right? Well, I, I think no, it might be kidding. a support less, right? Um, if we're bringing out a Magnus. I guess possible. sanking less, I suppose, they could. Feels like we need something now better for Empower. Gives them pretty good dual roam. They can take objectives. I think this also sets up for something uh, like a Lifestealer, who would be a pretty scary pick. Yeah, like Lifestealer, Ursa. And Slark's still Slark. okay. Not awful. Used to be a big uh, baseless strat when they did that Magnus Slark for quite a while. It'd be, it's good with Omni. Like, uh, I mean, obviously they're going to grab some melee core, but I think they're just they're obviously waiting to get the last pick. Yep. It's like perfect situation in some ways for Secret. They, no matter what they get, they're going to have Empower. Mm -hmm. They can just completely adjust it based on who Vici Gaming cleans up with with their, with their drafts, so get the best, uh, best hero for the occasion. It seems like one of these rare pools where the last pick is sort of advantageous because they have several different options. Heal is okay. Especially with the Magnus making it till this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Feels for okay. Uh, Beachy, they probably need to support. It really depends on where you think that tiny is going to go. If he's going to be the four, or if they want a four of their uh, of a different variety. I mean, Pudge is an option. And that is kind of the beauty of Tiny lately. Of course, he can do whatever. He can be off lane. He can be four. He can be a one or a two. See him everywhere. There's still some potential for Marana to pair with that Shadow Demon. If it's a support, I wonder if they could go over something like an Enchantress here. Um, against a melee core, it's not a bad choice. You can play much faster and much more aggressively as well. I'd say it's a little concerning just because there's so much overwhelming, like, pure damage coming out from the uh, Omni Knight. Whoa. And uh, then the Last Rack 2, just like tons of magic and things that can just focus her down. But it will be the Alk. So maybe a support Alk, as Purge was talking Could about be. before. Definitely. I've seen people trying offlane off. Alchemist. I don't know if they're willing to do it, but with those concoction changes. I feel like you should just do it as support. I think supporter works just as good. Like, and, and if, you're, if you're a core, you don't want to leave the lane to get last hits, but if you're a support, you're like, oh yeah, I'll spend time to grab a double on. It's, you can get so much gold out of it. I feel like Elk is... I think it's... A, I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's hard to say. They could be support tiny. Could oh, be yeah, yeah, I had to go to Slark. Okay. Like, once the Elk's out, it feels like that's just... You know, he's yeah. a big sack of meat. You just want to take all of his stats. Slap them on yourself and dish out some damage here. So much Boys. easier to read the, read the uh, secret draft. I would yeah, say. I, yeah. I'll, I'll go first this time. I like the secret draft. I like the Empower Slark. I like the Omni Lesh. I think they've got a lot of good options. Uh, what do you guys think for predictions here, game three? Uh, I feel like this is probably the closest one. Uh, I, I, I have to go with Vici. I feel like they're just playing a little bit better. Okay. Uh, but neither draft's mega convincing for me. But I'm interested to see what they do with the Tiny as well as the Alchemist. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious about their draft too. But it, right now it looks a little too abstract to me. And I, I really think that Omni plus Melee Heroes, especially like Sand King, is such a powerful combo. You can really snowball in the mid game. So I feel like for that reason I'll go Secret. Jack? I like Secret as well. I think, think things are very straightforward for them. I think the ease of execution is definitely in their favor. Um, Vici has been playing greedy tricord pretty much the whole tournament, but I think this one is really hard to put together. Uh, you know, if they win, I, I don't know. I see a bunch of Shadow Demon, Alk, or, uh, or Luna Illusions yeah. push. I, I don't see that scenario taking place fast enough. I like Secret. All right. Well, three for Secret and one for Vici as we move into game number three. Boys and girls at home and in the audience, thank you for sticking with us. We've got two beautiful casters once again. It's your man, Suns fan, and his good buddy, Cinder. Well, that's an understatement. Good buddy indeed. Sunspan here with Cinderin. Game three of this best of five grand finals. Even at one to one, my friend. That's how it works in game three. I don't know if you're aware of that. We have an alchemist in the game. I was super excited to see it until I realized it was support. So we can see a lot of concoction. Of course, the damage buffs to that have been pretty substantial. So, And I don't think I've yet to see that in a competitive game. So I'm excited to see that nonetheless. He has some talents now that empower it, right? Uh, on level 10, he gets cooldown. And on level 20, he gets plus 360 damage. Yeah, that's quite good. But, quite uh, good. Yeah, we'll see if he gets there. Support level 20 alchemist is something pretty yeah. unusual. Um, yeah, I was actually, I just want to start out by saying I, I was hoping for Secret to actually last pick a Meepo in this game instead of the Slark. I think both picks have their merits here. I know Ace plays very well on both of them, and I, he's a Meepo specialist. And the fact that Secret did not pick it here, I think maybe is a hint to where they placed the hero, because I think in the last patch they would have picked it in this position, but it has been nerfed a bit. And uh, they chose not to go for it in this instance. I think it was yeah, pretty what, good. What was the nerf? Meepo. The magic resistance is no longer yeah. uh, higher than the average, and is that it? Uh, jungling is worse, and that's a really big part of the hero. So you're, you're just slower at ramping up, and the minus 10% mag resistance is really significant, especially against a hero like Tiny you know, or Luna. You can die pretty fast. But in the past, Meepo was considered one of the really good heroes against Luna. Just sure, the Glaives can balance, but Eclipse is more or less worthless, and you just chain lock her down with Earthbind and kill her off in two seconds. But anyway, it's a slark this game. They didn't like the Meepo, and obviously not the best of power hero either. Just wanted to mention it as an honorable mention from that possible draft. So. Vici Gaming, a lot of stun, a lot of lockdown, a lot of damage, let's say. They have uh, physical amplification from both the Acid Spray and the Meld. As we get, maybe going to have a fight for the rune here. Oh, Secret didn't want to do it anyway. Got to yeah. back off. And Ace, and taking a little right click from the Rock guy, but not too much to speak of. We did discuss, of course, off, off mic, the, the demonic... Expecting them perhaps to get the Enchantress just because the Enchant is actually a Dispel now as well, but probably wouldn't have fit in their lineup, at least the current state. I, I think the lineup we just put together, I think the panel is slightly underestimating how good it is. I thought, I believe Jack was talking about ease of execution. I don't see this being that complex lineup to play altogether. Uh, but definitely Secret's lineup makes a lot of sense as well, so I, I'm with them on the assessment of this being probably maybe the closest draft so far. 
uh, Secret is very strong in team fights with their Sand King and Magnus and uh, Omni Knight heroes, but at the same time, VG Gaming, if they find any sort of avenue into the fight, they have a lot of burst damage. Speaking oh, of avenue into the fight, the pounce nice will pounce. connect. The self disruption, though, comes out from Fenrir as the concoction comes out from Lan M. Should be exciting to see this Tri V Tri go to work. Yep. How do you rare sight nowadays? How do you uh, fare Slark in situations like this? In a, I mean, typically Luna is pretty damn strong. Luna is great in Charlie, and Slark is hot garbo. But if mm -hmm. you have these kind of heroes around it, it can work. Uh, obviously, Sanking and Omni Knight, uh, both able to enable the Slark in lane. There's a stun, and there is obviously the heal. Most of the time, Slark's problem is he can't really commit in the lane because he's too fragile. But Omni Knight heal can help offset that that problem. So. Could see Yaps, it Yaps trying. Really to looking through. for that level one burrow strike, but it's going to be a difficult one to pull off. Lan M, of course, pretty tanky is that support. Uh, you're going to see the pounce apply to Fenrir again. This time the disruption is not on him. The concoction coming out. It's going to be a long one. Lots of damage being applied to puppies. Running away, though, should be safe for now. The, they turn the sights onto Lan M. A lot of trading of damage, but no kills as of yet in this game. Of course, only two minutes in so far. Secret War trying to take advantage of their level twos. Um, they. Flat out just killed way more creeps in the lane right now, so they're out leveling the opposing tri lane. There's a lot of experience coming Vici's way now. I'm curious to see if they're going to split all of it three ways, or if they'll give the Luna a bit more here, maybe, to get that level three for the level two Lucent Beam. Looks like Lanham will still be in XP range for most of it. Probably wants to get the Acid Spray point. The first point is really good value point, minus four armor. Uh, great for tri lanes like this, obviously deals damage too. Oh, well, Fata looks like he got a nice skewer onto Young Eleven. He's going to take heavy damage from that tower. We'll live through it, but... But off to a pretty good start here in the in the top lane. Yeah, we should obviously just have a look at the other lanes too. So Tiny versus Magnus, I think, is a tiny favorite lane. Maybe not by that much, but should be having a good time. And TA versus Lesh is one of those lanes that you pretty rarely see nowadays. But I feel like Lesh has a pretty good grip on this lane. Has damage over time with Edict. He can. He has a pretty easy to land stun on TA because her movement pattern is generally pretty predictable when it comes to last hitting, being short range. Um, and of course can punish that TA if she goes to the jungle to farm, you push the tower with Edict, so you force rotation very quickly. Nice benefit from Lesh mid that we don't see too often. Yeah, we don't see it very often. Uh, do you think it's one of those things you only see in Captain's Draft because there's not that many heroes, or is it just a situation where it's actually good against this VG gaming line? We talked about how Refraction obviously not quite as effective because of Diabolic Edict. But I think going towards like the mid to late stage, how does this Lesh fare in this game? I think they just have the type of lineup that has everything that Leshrek needs. They have uh, a setup stun. They actually have two setup stuns, both RP and Sanking stun. Uh, they have some sort of save. I think that's very relevant when you're playing Lesh. He, he deals a lot of damage, but it's very fragile. So having Omni Knight with that or something like an Oracle or Disrupt uh, from Shadow Demon, something like that, classic combinations off bottom lane. There's going to be a stun on Luna. Yep, so first repelled, repelled onto Yapsor. Here's the pounce onto Lan M. I don't think Seeker's going to want to apply any more pressure here. A lot of spells used. Purification still only level one, of course. Doing Everybody suffering so on levels far. overall. Huh? Secret are doing pretty fine in this lane. Stark has about the same farm as the Luna in this aggro tri lane. Obviously, Vichy Gaming took care of blocking the pull. They placed the top left Observer Ward on that, and Secret thought they were placing a deeper one to the south. And we're seeing the power of the Edict now. Level two, Ori. Use the refraction. Now it's on cooldown for 10 seconds. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Looks like Ace has taken heavy damage thanks to Fenrir and that Soul Catcher. He has a healing salve and a lot of sticks, so he's just fine, but we'll be missing some CS. And now this bottom lane is starting to ramp up for VG Gaming, I would say. They got the Soul Catcher. They're getting level 3 on Shadow Demon. Luna's oh, already level 3. Diabolic Edict takes off the refraction. Yapsor with the Burrow Strike. Looks like there's some poor coming in the way of Alchemist, but it's going to be first blood for mid one. They're Oh, Lan Perhaps Tick's going on Lan so M now as Magnus in the top lane will drop to the deck. So it's a trade of sorts across the map. Yep. Good rotation from Yep, sir. We and saw knowing that, they're going to aggress on onto Ace, at least for now. But Puppy with a purification will keep his buddy safe. That's a uh, yeah, good move from Yep, sir, to come in there and already showcasing the great synergy. This is a classic duo. Uh, Sand King Lashrak was actually one of the common dual lanes a long while back. All the way back to Dota 1. Uh, mid 1, be careful. Ooh, that's a close he one. He is actually. No, it's not going to run down. Sankin coming in for help as well. He could potentially turn this around, actually. Mid 1. Trying to bait Ori in. That was really nice. Diabolic Edict. Can the Split Earth connect? Doesn't not going to be in range this time. Another TP support. This time it will be Shadow Demon. So mid 1 in the mid, in the mid lane. 18 and 9 versus TA's 20 and 12. So pretty much a wash, I would say. Yeah. Other than More the less. kill, of course. Bot in the meantime. 
Still a, a little bit under leveled compared to Young Eleven, but kind of to be expected. Hello. Line. Scouts him out, runs away. He tapped. Oh him my! Up. Young Eleven again, getting the kill on Fata. That's two kills to his name, and that means Vici Gaming is going to be super happy with that. As we're going to see a pounce bottom lane. Purification still online. Paparazzi getting completely surrounded, but Yapsar misses the Burrow Strike. He's a TK. And knowing that spell is down, Paparazzi will TP out to safety. Top tower is under that is one downside of Secret's lineup is there. Like, if the Sanking Stun misses and Mag doesn't have a blink, it's really difficult for them to engage fights, actually. It's very important that Yapsor lands and these. Gets up a huge concoction and Puppy will me. fall. Yapsor still has a repel on him, but won't go any further. Paparazzi. We'll go back to the farming route. Ace, in the meantime, with 21 and 3 CS versus the Luna 25 and 10. I love the synergy in this VG Gaming aggressive trialing. It's, it's actually a kind of old school thing to play Shadow Demon and Alk together. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So looking for the Burrow Strike. He'll get it. Purification to follow. That's going to be a kill on Luna. Land him in the meantime. Getting that concoction off. Question is, can Secret aggress any further? Yapsor, Burrow Strike coming online shortly. Puppy and company look to take him out. The purification will hit, and the last hit from Puppy will be enough. The Avalanche toss from Young Eleven, who TPs it, will find the kill, so he has three kills to his name now. This Tiny's game, really yes, strong. Yes, he's very scary. Um, I haven't talked too much about this, but I feel like this hero has a really good matchup against Slark in the game in general. Um, obviously, you have the, the extreme AoE burst, and you're naturally pretty tanky as well. So, sure, you're a hero that Slark can hit, but only for a very short period of time. You have to be very careful with how much you commit. Like, if you're, if you're three-quarters health on Slark in the mid-game, you actually just get blown up by Tiny. Uh, so, Young Eleven having this good start has to be concerning for Secret. They actually don't have the best answers to this Tiny. And usually the way you kill cores with this Radiant line, obviously when they're doing well, is you chain stun them. But Tiny, guess what, has a lot of status resistance later on. Locking him down for extended periods of time against disruption as well will not be an easy task for them. And they're going to have to. They're going to have to deal with him later. This is not only a Luna game. It's also very much so a Tiny game. And TA also getting farmed. All the cores of Vici having a great game right now. Yapsor taking a lucent beam to the face. Yapsor sitting in the trees. It is daytime now. Not sure if the creep's on or not. I doubt it, but looks like we have some rotations from Vici. Yapsor not able to find any sort of an opening there for him. And Ace, of course, once he gets level 6, we'll be able to pretty much stand alone against anybody and start de-warding heroes for that matter. One of those vision heroes. We have actually have two night vision heroes in the game, one for each respective team. Unless they changed that, did Slark, Slark stayed as a night vision hero, I believe, right? I believe so, yeah. I'm not sure if he got a nerf, but I think he still has more night vision than average if he did. Yeah. I don't remember the numbers. I think so, too. And Luna's Paparazzi. obviously tied to level of Lunar Blessing. Right. So currently has way less night vision than her maximum. We'll be reaching that later, probably around level 14. Generally maximizing the Glaives first. He's holding onto a skill point right now, actually. Paparazzi does not want to push the wave with Moon Glaives, wants to secure CS. And skill it later when he wants to farm stacks. Do we actually have any stacks right now? We have a bit for the TA. She's got a triple right now that she's farming up. Um, is that all that they've managed to stack so far? It looks like it. Yeah, that's pretty nice. TA top of the charts as far as CS is concerned. And Land M is actually level 5 on this, on this Alchemist. That's pretty damn good. He's going to leech some more XP from the Ancient Camp. So it should be level 6 momentarily. Uh, mid one, of course, getting a very early level of Pulse Nova. Has a Kaya right now. At what level do you typically see Pulse Nova picked up on Leshes? He got it at level 6, which I Most find a little bit... Six, I think. These days it is? You pick yeah, it up I at 6? So. The spell's pretty strong. It's also, especially in this game, it's a secondary way of getting rid of Refraction faster. Um, just, yeah, I, I think that's the way to go. A bit surprised to see him skipping boots, though. Very unusual. Huh. Yeah, that's true. Two and all Kai, no boots. I mean, he is oh, the kinda, he's like a half Coming goat, in. so he kind of walks faster than normal, you would think. Needs more boots. Yeah. Well, has the Kaya, so he's going to deal a considerable amount of damage to Vici if he's able to get off any of these stuns. Of course, does have pretty good setup overall. We're going to see the Lightning Storm we're going to play, but oh. no Burrow Strike until now. But there's the Pulse Nova doing so much work. Fenrir. Oh, okay. The Eclipse comes he's into play. Die, I think. The Disruption. Yeah. Yeah, won't save his life at the end of the day. Lucent Beam now being used to full effect as Yapsor will be the second kill for Vici Gaming in that mini engagement, so a two for one overall. Secret are definitely not doing too hot in this game right now. It's the Vici Gaming lineup that is getting clearly the most farm. TA is going to be a monster potentially in this game. It's a lot of farm on the Luna. We know what SD Luna can do. And they, like you said, the Alchemist currently level six and a half. I Ooh, don't know if he used 11, the tone there. Boy. 
Oh, you can see Avalanche tosses it enough to get the kill. It is a huge kill for Young 11. 10 minute Blink Dagger. He is level 11, has the Blink Dagger now, and that Slark Ace is only level 6 by comparison. That is a huge discrepancy. It's definitely warming up in this game, this Young 11. I criticized him uh, yesterday for being a bit inconsistent in some of their games. This is looking great. He was also very good in the early game of this last Centaur game. Uh, so, I was mentioning he's a, the type of player who seems to rise to the occasion when it's like really important games and Vici need to win. He has his best performances in the most important games. It's a great asset to have, obviously. And in this game, he has just been styling. Destroyed Fata in lane. Currently four kills, got that blink. Getting a key kill on a core. If he keeps this pace up, might just carry the game for his team. And no deny there for Secret, as Lan M showing off that he is level 6 now. No and mana Young for 11 on the backside has the blink available, mid 1, dealing some damage to these illusions and getting purified. Here comes the Avalanche Toss combination and the Lucid Beam. They find Sand King, Yapsor, not where he wants to be. 5k net worth lead at 12 minutes against Secret. Yep. This feels like game 1 almost. I am actually, I'm not that surprised. <laughs> You said that every single game, I think. Huh? You said that what? literally every game. That I'm not surprised? Yeah. I'm not surprised that Vici are winning the laning stage. That's what I'm getting at here. Like, when you look when you look over their heroes, then... And you see the way they got away with their lanes, I don't think this is an unexpected outcome. Maybe that it's this severe, but they managed to secure themselves some pretty good matchups. Like, the Tiny versus Magnus. I don't think Magnus should die twice in that lane, but it's still definitely Tiny favored. Their aggro trialing worked very well. And I think Vici are feeling very good in this game. Very patient here from Young11 as well. Don't think he can combo Fata by himself. But he does have a substantial lead right now. Of course, Blink Dagger has been online for a while. TA also has one. We'll be working toward the Desolator. Oh, Fata actually finds it the other way around. The Avalanche does hit. The RP expended. Here comes the TP nice support stuns, from Yapsor. <laughs> Young11 is pretty tanky yeah. overall. And look at this. Four heroes against Young11. Can he get the Blink off in time? It's going to be close. The purification cancels it. We have more Ace coming in as well. They do find the kill. It takes four heroes, and it's going to cost them a tier one, but they desperately needed that one. Ace created. Indeed. Oh, man, the status, status resistance is so disgustingly powerful. Like, that kill on more or less any other heroes takes five seconds, and that one took, like, 20 to chase him for so long because their RP lasts, like, a second and a half. Sanking Stun lasts a second, and he runs away. Yes, they do get the kill. I do not think that was really worth it when they lose this integral tower in mid for it. Um, but I think Secret feel like they have to do something. I don't think you can just sit back and farm. This Tiny will be taking over the map, so gotta be the ones to make the move sometimes, and they have to be willing to pay for it. That was not a, that was not a cheap kill. Paparazzi with the Mask of Madness now. And we'll see if we have... At what point does... How comfortable does Vici feel? in this game. Obviously they have the 5k lead, they don't know that necessarily, but it's in terms of lineups in the mid-stage of the game, I think they feel pretty comfortable. very comfortable. Uh, so you don't want to force fights with Eclipse, anything like that, you're just happy to defend and pick I think pick you, off. you keep pushing waves, at least, and just, oh, mid lane, land him. Yeah, land him, he's just a fat body in the middle here, Young11, there's the GA by Puppy, but mid one taking substantial damage, and Lucent Beam is enough to take him out. And just like that, Secret on the retreat. It looks like Puppy might be next on the list as this concoction. He dies in mid-air. Double kill for Paparazzi. Paparazzi is having a hell of a series. Yep. I think it really comes down to the lane from Vichy. That was so good in this game that they're in this position. They're going to just keep the ball rolling. Go bottom. They got a couple kills. TA was already pushing out this wave. And I like to see this Luna get involved with that Eclipse, but they don't have to, like feel like they need to force fights. I think they just need to make sure to push out the waves and play aggressively from a farming standpoint, not necessarily from a killing standpoint. Just put pressure on Secret to secure themselves safe farm. And that is exactly what they're doing. Just ramping this up. You see TA has not been involved in that many kills just yet. Oh, He's just getting rich. Toss again. Yaps are pretty low. The Soul Catcher applied. They had the Sentry to see him through the Sandstorm as well. One right click will do it, but Yapsor looks to have the speed advantage. Toss. Oh, the Toss finally comes into play. That damn creep <laughs> following there Tiny. <laughs> There's just a random Thanks, creep buddy. placed there by Ice Frog. And down Yapsor goes again. Got them a tower, though. Not too bad. Uh, Ace got this top tower for himself with the Empower buff from Fata. We'll be farming pretty fast. He's going for Fata this again, backing out at the perfect time here. Oh, Ooh. is he going to get found out? No. no. Good TP. Would have been a blind avalanche, but not to be this time around. Shadowblade now picked up by Ace, so... Yep. 
Good at item. this point, now Secret perhaps tries to go on the offensive despite being behind by 7k? I think they do. I think they they have to have this feeling of of pressure on them in this game. They they must know that Vichy Gaming is farming this, this much. They know how TA works. They know what kind of game she's having. Uh, they know the start Tiny had. So, um, and I, th I think more than anything, they also know what's going to happen when BKBs start coming out. Like, that's a really big problem for their lineup. It's annoying for Slark to deal with. It's really annoying for Lashrak to deal with. Sanky can't do much. Nice reaction there coming out from Ace quick on the pounce. But, you know, both Luna and TA, natural BKB carriers, is a great BKB game. They will be building their standard ramp up items to keep the farming pace up and being able to fight still, regardless if they have to. So we have got the Blink Deso 16 minutes in on Ori. Really good timing. Uh, Luna will be finishing her Manta, and I think both of them will just go BKB next item. And th at that timing, I just I don't see Secrets lineup standing a chance at fighting them. It's going to be it's tough. It's going to be a Roche then, you know? That's another thing we haven't covered. This Dire lineup is so good at killing Roche. They have Meld and Acid Spray. It's like some of the best abilities in the game to kill Roshan, only second really to uh, Corrosive Haze, which has not been available in a min many of our games. I just, I really like this Vici draft in this game. It's, yeah, it's quite so, strong. so solid to me. Paparazzi working towards his Manta style right now. Young 11 for an SNY. Lan M, of course, this is a hero we don't get to see as support very often, but with one level of Grievel's Greed, that's when he can start taking off in the farm department. Similar to almost like a Doom, I would say. Of course, they play very differently, but you just have to be careful. If you're behind, he can really snowball into a core at some point in the game. But probably going to be going for, I would see, like Solar Crest at some point. He actually is going for a Solar Crest right now yep. with that drums intact. And there you, we're going to see exactly what you just said. Acid Spray, plus Deso, double damage. plus Meld. Or? Who has double damage? No, there's no double Never mind. I thought I saw double damage. Maybe super blue. It's like there's a blue glow on Luna that tricked me a little bit into double damage. That's just her face, I'm pretty sure. Her face is trailing behind her when she moves? Yeah, Sounds yeah. pretty... Uh, I don't know about that one. Well, either way. New Secret. Bench. They, I feel like they have to do something this game. Yes. They can't just... Stay back, play defensive, hope for the best. They do have good high ground with, with Magnus and, of course, great defensive capabilities in Omni Knight. But at the same time, we're talking about a Luna Shadow Demon. You don't really have to commit too much to take towers once and you get to that point of the game. It's a support Omni Knight, which is in sharp contrast to what we usually see with the position 3. Omni Knight is really good with items, but without any items at all, it can be difficult to get in position to cast those spells. And you're a very easy kill. Yeah. If he gets jumped, Puppy will get destroyed in two hits by this TA. So. Uh, it's, he has to be a lot more careful than usual. And what it really comes down to is, so we were looking at the draft, right, and the panel said it was pretty even, and I agreed with them, but if the laning stage goes like this, it's not even. If Vici would have just played a regular safe lane with their Luna SD, and let the Slark free farm his safe lane while um, just having the Magnus in the offlane getting what he could and giving Lesh a good start mid, then Secret would have probably been pretty happy. But like this, Vici Gaming just secured themselves a really big advantage. It makes so you what wonder you're if there's something is, Secret could have done to avoid this laning. So what you're saying is because they lost the laning stage, it's not even anymore. That's basically what you just said, which is literally common sense. Lan okay. M and company grouping up towards mid. And give us a stats like more a pressure bit. to be applied to this tier 2 mid. But you're right. Omni Knight as a support, obviously going to be struggling in the level department. And it's all about positioning with that hero. And it's not like he's going to get an Ags anytime soon to be able to cast that GA globally. No. If anything, I think Puppy wants either an Edelens or a Blink. Do you think there's any chance we see Nullifier from Vici? On top of the Demonic Purge to be able to take yeah, off GA? Yeah, that's a very good chance. Um, who, who would pick that up? Would it be I think TA after TA? BKB. It's actually a really good item, this game in general. I could definitely see that. There's a good chance that Secret Heroes also want to buy Ghost Scepter this game against uh, TA. And it's like, it's a double-edged sword against Luna, but might need it on Lashrak. Like, it feels like he's just going to die if he doesn't have that item. Goes in. And it looks like this tier 2 tower might fall here as Fata comes in with a double RP into the skewer, into Ace with an Empower on top of him. That is Lan M dropping to the deck. Puppy pops the GA and will go down to the Eclipse. They're going to find two on the back end here. Two for two to start this fight. Yapsor looking for a Burrow Strike. Ori, of course, dealing so much damage. Ace has to pop that ult. Avalanche Toss will not connect. And Ace struggling to get away as a double kill will find for Ori. And he's almost done with his BKB, and this just looks this miserable for time. Secret right now. There is an epicenter available on Sand King. I'm not sure they kept track of that. And he just got his 20-minute Blink Dagger. Very late Blink Dagger timing for Yapsor, by the way. One of the more greedy four players will generally have this earlier, but has had a hard game. They're going to go high ground. They do not know about this. He's actually channeling it right now. Going to go in on the Luna. Good yeah. damage. Skewer. Big Skewer as well. Paparazzi looks to be falling, but... 
In fact, he will. He wasn't the one with the Aegis, actually. Oh, that was side CA. Blade, Fought magic. The time. My lord. Ori, what a beast. Burrow Strike applied. Yapsor has to blink out to safety. And with that Desolator, and of course, Tiny's just going to pick up that tree and whack that melee Rax. All right, let's go. And this thing is donezo. The question is, will they go any further? Avalanche is looking for the toss on the outside, but it looks like they're going to find the kill on Young Eleven. A little bit of overextension here for Vici Gaming, potentially. They're going to find kill on mid one. They end up evening that out, but of course, how much time is left on that Aegis? Mm -hmm. About a minute and a half. Okay. So roughly. We'll see if they can continue the pressure or not. We have the disruption. Ace has to pop his ult. Lanham's going to stun himself with a concoction. Ace might be looking for some stat steal here, but Yapsor jumps in. They have vision. A couple more right clicks will suffice. And another kill for Vici Gaming. 12k lead at 21 minutes. A little bit of miscommunication there. Uh, Yapsor felt like they could go in the Alc when he self-stunned and Slark could hit, but Ace did not agree with that. Just wanted to get the hell out of there. His TA is way too strong right now. And, I mean, we saw Secret come back in game number one. I feel like this one is more hopeless, man. Is this a 95 if I? <laughs> I don't know. Give I mean, me there's, always, there's always that RP play, right? Like, it could happen. Yeah. It definitely could happen. But I think at this point, that is the only way Secret win this game. They need a really big RP. We're talking three or four heroes. And if you catch Tiny, it won't be for long because of that status resistance. Ori jumps in. There's the RP. It's only on the one. Aegis. Of course, he still has Aegis, so this might oh, end up not concoction. being great. Nice concoction on the two. They're going to find one kill. Magnus looks to be next on the list, trying to get that invisibility going. Ace extremely low. Has to pop the ult again to try to get away. Concoction is going to find the way on mid one. There's the Burrow Strike from Yapsor. Keeping Vici at bay as Young Eleven is just in their base. <laughs> okay. Well... Looks like Young Eleven I think will they blink out to safety, and yeah, they're just going to continue the pressure. I mean, why not? Ten seconds on Omni Knight, no GA at the moment. And no RP is the bigger thing. It's Indeed. like almost impossible to fight into this without an they RP. They essentially traded RP for Aegis. Oh, he stopped oh, Yapsor's blink. jumps in. Yapsor is getting destroyed, and that side blades is also doing a lot of work as the epicenter coming through as well. Leshrak will find his way to the grave. He has to buy back in this game, and of course, that is not what Secret wants. Yapsor on the deck for 50 seconds, no buyback to speak of. Lan M getting the concoction off. Looks like he might fall to Ace, but no, he's going to think about it. Okay, looks like mid one was tossed. End up getting the kill. It's a one for one there. And this Rax is in a lot of trouble. Avalanche toss, not quite there. The toss still available as Ace has to part the dark pack. GA keeping him alive for now, but the toss is enough to take him out. And Vici Gaming look to be wrapping up game three in style. The double kill for Ori. GG's come out. This was a super fast game. All right. Even draft. Well, what is this stat? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, Slex. Sum up this game uh, for me, big boy. Yeah, that was a...